Welcome to a short information video about behaviour at George Pinder School. The full behaviour policy can be found on the George Pinder School website by clicking on Home, About Us and the Our Policies tab. George Pinder School believes that in order to facilitate teaching and learning, acceptable behaviour must be demonstrated in all aspects of school life. The school is committed to promoting desired behaviour, promoting self-esteem, self-discipline proper regard for authority and positive relationships based on mutual respect, ensuring equality and fair treatment for all, praising and rewarding good behaviour, challenging and disciplining bad behaviour, providing a safe environment free from disruption, violence, discrimination, bullying and any form of harassment, encouraging positive relationships with parents and carers, developing positive relationships with our students to enable early intervention, a shared approach which involves students in the implementation of the school's policy and associated procedures, promoting a culture of praise and encouragement in which all students can achieve. At George Pinder School we expect the students to follow staff instructions every time and to do so straight away. This is important, not least for their learning, but also for their safety. When a teacher asks for three, two, one silence, students must stop talking and raise their hand to demonstrate that they are listening. This also applies to students when in the yard, dining areas or corridors. It's important to remember that if there's a problem, there are lots of people who can help both the students and the parents or carers. The form tutor should be the first person to go to if there's an issue. Other staff can help if the problem is more serious. The head of year, Miss Pickles or Mr Murray. If there's an urgent problem, if you're in lesson, tell your teacher. If it's an immediate problem, your teacher can request on call who will take you to the right person to help. If it's during social time, speak to the nearest member of staff on duty who will help. You cannot decide to leave a lesson without permission. This again is for your safety. For serious concerns, George Pinder School operates a safeguarding phone 07 895 132 530. This can be used to contact the school if you've got any problems such as bullying or anything else that's serious, if you're concerned about a friend, if you have issues inside or outside of school. The phone is checked outside of school hours including evenings, weekends and holidays. Positive discipline. At George Pinner School we manage behaviour through the positive discipline approach. It encourages students to make the right choices and be rewarded for these. The student planner is central to positive discipline and allows the student, their parents and carers and staff to see where behaviour and effort have been good. The student planner must be well looked after. It must not be vandalised and must be kept graffiti free. It remains the property of the school. Students must have this with them at all times, in all venues throughout the school day. It needs to be placed on the desk at the start of every lesson. If you do not have your planner, then you will be placed in seclusion. If you refuse to hand over your planner when requested to, this will also result in you being placed in seclusion. Positives and negatives. When you do things right, you will get stamps. Stamps are traded for rewards. If you do things wrong, you get codes. Codes can turn into detentions, seclusion and higher sanctions. If you make positive choices, you will be rewarded. You'll earn stamps for doing your best and contributing positively, doing your best and working hard in lessons, bringing the correct equipment to school each day, looking smart wearing the school uniform, being on time to lessons, being polite and respectful to others, and looking after your environment. Tutor positives. You can get 20 stamps simply for every day, being present, on time, being fully equipped and having the correct uniform, and each week, a full week of attendance at every session, and no negative comments for the week. Class positives. In lessons, your class teacher might reward you for contributing in class, making expected or better than expected progress, for having a good attitude and making good effort, for good homework, for its effort and detail, and anything that contributes positively to your learning experience. So in the student planner, in every lesson, your teacher will stamp as you achieve and are successful in class, thus building up the total each week which can be cashed in for rewards. When you have collected enough stamps, 
you can exchange these for rewards visits, for shopping vouchers, gaming vouchers, meal vouchers, and basically anything else you can request which is suitable for someone your age. When it doesn't go to plan, the codes. If you're challenging or defiant in a lesson, you can be issued a B code for behaviour or a P code which means a lack of progress or that you've been passive in the lesson. If you're challenging or defiant outside of class, you can be given an AS code, which is around school. There are also organisational codes for homework, uniform, equipment and being late to school. Uniform will be checked on entry to school, but if you choose to change your uniform throughout the day, including rolling up your skirt, you receive a U code. Repeated intentional uniform issues will be treated as defiance and be recorded as a B behaviour code. At George Pinder School, the correct shoes are plain black leather look shoes. They should be unbranded, there should be no logos visible. You are allowed to wear ankle boots, but only if they're under trousers. Here are some examples of incorrect shoes. Vans, Converse, Nike and other branded shoes are not allowed. No canvas or fabric shoes, no trainers or any shoes that are adorned with glitter, diamante or buckles, things like that. The school uniform trousers are plain black formal trousers. There should be a tailored fit with side seam pockets or no pockets at all. Fitted but not tight, a two pence coin should be able to free fall from waist to ankle. Some examples of trousers which are not acceptable are those that are denim or denim look, leggings, skinny fit trousers and jogging bottoms. Pockets should be at the side seams and not at the rear or front, nor should they have any zips or button fastenings. Other things to note about the uniform is that the shirt must have its top button fastened and a tie must be worn, unless you're wearing a blouse where no tie is needed. The blazer should be worn at all times unless permission is given by the classroom teacher and likewise the slipover must be worn at all times. We do not allow the top button to be undone or a shirt being worn open neck without a tie instead of a blouse. Patterned or bright coloured socks are not permitted. Hoodies and coats should be removed before entry into the school and shorts are not allowed. When it comes to hair, nails and jewellery, one pair of stud earrings may be worn in the earlobes, natural hair colours only, clear nail varnish or French nails only, and a watch, including a smart watch, may be worn. No rings, bracelets or necklaces should be worn. No other body piercings, apart from the pair of stud earrings, should be seen. No acrylic or gel nails, and no bright or unnatural nail polishes. No unnatural or extreme hairstyles or colours. Again, other than the one pair of stud earrings, no other types of piercings are permitted at George Pinder School, and this includes the wearing of plastic retainers. These are not allowed. Makeup should be very subtle and natural in appearance. Students with excessive or inappropriate makeup will be asked to remove it. Refusal will result in seclusion for defiance until the makeup is removed. Parents or carers will be contacted. Students are discouraged from taking toilet breaks in lesson time. They will not be allowed to go in the first or last 10 minutes of a lesson. They must be recorded in the student planner by the teacher and the planner must be carried by the student during the toilet break. Students with toilet or medical classes or time out permission will have this recorded in their planner. Students requesting repeated toilet breaks may need on-call supervision. Equipment. Every student is expected to have a pen, pencil, ruler, calculator, reading book and planner. A school bag, which must be big enough to fit an A4 file in it. These will be checked during every form time in a classroom and checked in every lesson where appropriate. You will receive an e-code if you forget your school bag, your planner, pen, pencil, ruler, calculator, reading book or any other equipment that might be needed for specific lessons. If you forget your planner, you will have only one chance per half term to work with a planner sheet provided by your tutor. After that, you will be in seclusion until your planner is found or brought into school or a new planner is bought. It is important that parents and carers know about how their child is getting on at school. 
It's for that reason it is expected that the planner should be checked and signed each week by the parent or carer. It should be done for Monday morning. Every day that is not signed, an e-code will be recorded in the planner. In the student planner, at the bottom of the codes page, there is an area for where the form tutor and the parents or carers can sign each week. And this is part of the link between home and school. It is the student's responsibility to make sure that they have all of the equipment that they need for each lesson every day. An L code will be issued if a student is late to school. Students should be on the George Pinder School site by 25 to 9 each morning. If you are late, you will receive an L code. Three lates will result in a 30 minute after school late detention to be issued. You must be on time to every lesson every day. You need to be in school learning every day, aiming for 100% attendance. If you are too ill to attend, parents or carers must telephone the school on the day of absence and provide an absence note in your planner when you return. Homework is an essential part of any student's learning. Homework must be completed and handed in on time. Homework should be completed to the very best of the student's ability and homework details should be written in full in the planner. Attending Homework Club can be useful if you need additional support. A homework age code will be issued if homework is not handed in or is incomplete, or if the homework is substandard. If the homework is copied, both students will receive a homework code. The behaviour or B code. Students should do as they are told by staff first time every time. Students should listen carefully when the teacher or another person is talking and not talk themselves. Students should put their hand up and wait for permission to speak. Students should also try their best without disturbing others. Examples of behaviours that might be given B codes are rudeness and poor manners, interrupting the teacher and other students when they are speaking, silly behaviour that stops others from learning, not following instructions or swearing or using derogatory language. Around school, students should walk on the left-hand side of the corridors they should walk calmly and in an orderly fashion from one area of the school to another. Eating is only allowed in designated areas, Giorgio's in the main assembly hall, and they are reminded to put litter in the bin afterwards. Behaviours that would be sanctioned with an AS code are walking in the middle or the right-hand side of a corridor, running and silly behaviour in the corridors, eating and drinking on the corridors, littering, being out of bounds, fizzy drinks and energy drinks are not permitted anywhere on the site, and neither is smoking or vaping. During the school day, mobile phones are not allowed. They should be switched off and out of sight until after 3pm. If seen, they will be confiscated by a member of staff and can be collected from reception at the end of the day. If you have your mobile phone confiscated three times, you will not be able to collect the phone yourself. A parent or carer must come into school to collect it. This rule applies to headphones including AirPods and similar devices. So how do the codes in the planner work? Inside the student planner there is a space where all the B, P and AS codes can be recorded along with the date, the time, the subject, which code it is and which member of staff recording the code can be written. Any further details can also be noted there. Three codes of the same type in a half term will give a detention. Eight codes in one week results in the student being placed in seclusion. In the diary section of the student planner, homeworks can be written by the student, detentions can be noted by the teacher. Communication between school and home can go on the bottom right hand side and this can include absence notes and also information from school that parents need to know about. The Huel codes for homework, uniform, lates and equipment are written in the box here. How the behaviour and passivity codes will be issued. If there's an issue, the teacher will talk to the student and outline the concern. If this continues, the teacher will offer a formal verbal warning. The student's planner will be taken by the teacher and the student will be given a short amount of time to reconsider their behaviour. If the behaviour continues, the first B or P code will be entered in the planner with a reason. Again, further take-up time will be given to the student to allow them to consider their behaviour. 
This will continue with a second B or P code. The student will then be moved within the classroom. Further take up time will be offered. If a third B or P code is entered at the planner, Encore will collect the student and the student will be taken to safety net that is relocated into another classroom and a 30 minute detention set. All teaching staff and classrooms have this display which outlines the process. Further possible sanctions after being removed from a lesson. If on call is called for three codes in a lesson, the student will be taken to another classroom for the remainder of the lesson and a 30 minute detention will be issued. After on call for eight codes or a serious incident, a student will do a minimum of five good periods in seclusion. They will then return to class only if seclusion is completed successfully. Seclusion ends at half past three. If failing seclusion, a student may be offered removal with a member of the senior leadership team for an agreed period of time. Failing seclusion or SLT remove can result in suspension from school. Any child development pattern of poor behaviour will undertake a contract involving parents. Targets and support will be agreed to enable the student to make more positive choices and avoid further sanctions. A final attempt to avoid suspension might include the pupil being sent to a partner school in Scarborough, Graham School, for the period of time they would have been excluded. This enables a continuation of school life. Failure of any of the above may result in a suspension. We want to help students become the best they can be, an active citizen and a valuable member of society. Our behaviour policy looks to reinforce positives, the positive actions that can make people happy and lead them to a bright future. All members of George Pinder School are asked to demonstrate the Pinder values every day. To be proud to be proud to be part of the school and its community, to wear the uniform correctly and to be an ambassador for the school and a role model for others. To be independent, to be able to make the right decision at the right time, to organise yourself and your time to be successful and to be able to work successfully on your own. To be neighbourly, to be helpful and supportive of others around you at all times, to care for the school environment and surrounding area. To be determined, to be successful in whatever you do, to try your best no matter how challenging things get and to make a positive difference within the school and wider community. To be aspirational, to aim high and push yourself to achieve the things you want to, to have ambitions and plan how to get them and don't be afraid to ask for help or advice. And to be respectful towards other people, their property and the school. People may have different opinions, beliefs or lifestyles to yourself. Be tolerant and have an open mind where possible.